Hey everyone, so we're going to take a look at shooting in your project. So task 4 uh, revolves around being able to eventually shoot those targets in the level. We're not going to get there just yet, so this first video really is about setting up a projectile that we will eventually launch towards them. So I'm just going to use a primitive sphere for this. Um, if you want to import a mesh or model something or find an asset that exists, go for it. But for the sake of just getting this up and running and working, I'm going to use basic sphere. Now it's a bit too big, so I'm going to scale it down. Um, and I've locked the, the scale here so that all three will change when I change one. So I'm just going to drop this down to 0.15. And notice I only have to type it in once because I've, I've locked the three. Uh, so you could do the same. And because this is eventually going to be a projectile that's going to move around, we definitely don't want it flagged as static. So static's nice when it's just an environmental piece and it's got it's there to look pretty, but we want this to be functional, so we're going to change that to movable. Um, and then you might be tempted to put on like simulate physics and stuff, but we're actually going to use a component that will do that for us. So um, without further ado, I will turn that into a blueprint. Um, you could have made this as a new blueprint, so you could have just come down to your blueprints folder, right clicked and created a blueprint class as you might have done in the past. Uh, but I'm going to turn this existing sphere into a blueprint that we can build on. So I'm just going to find the blueprint button in the details panel, hit that, and then just make sure that it's saving into my blueprints folder, which it is. And I'm going to change this to player projectile and hit select. Okay, so that has popped up uh, a new tab in my editor window here. Where I'm editing this projectile object. And it's dead easy to do. So with this with this now in existence, we can add components just as we've done in the past. Um, the one we're after here is a projectile movement component. So if you just search for projectile, find projectile movement, add that, and this does a lot of stuff for us. So with it selected, you might straight away see that we've got this speed setting. If you can't see it in the details panel, just search for speed and we need to give it some initial speed, which I'm going to go for 3000, I think is used in the first person example. So we'll just match that and the max speed of 3000 as well. You could put that higher if you really want to. And then let's just check that works. I'm going to compile it, save it and just hit play. You can see it's gone. It was probably moving before I'd really sort of got focus on the window, but you can see it's over here now. So it has definitely moved and it's come to a standstill. We can evolve it slightly, so maybe it should delete itself after a while and um, maybe a bit of bounciness so it doesn't stop quite so quickly. Let's have a look at both of those things. Back in the same uh, window as we were. Just going to clear that search and find bounciness next. So you've got this projectile bounces. I think it should bounce um, and I'm actually fairly happy with the defaults but play around with it. If you want it to be really bouncy you can put that up. If you want your projectile to fire in a straight line you can get rid of the gravity scale. So there's all sorts of stuff you can experiment with here to make that projectile a bit more customized. Uh, but then back in the root I also want to change this initial lifespan. So I've just clicked on the um, player projectile itself there and this initial lifespan I'm just going to put to three seconds. So after three seconds it will delete itself. Let's give that another look. And just hit play and I should see this projectile bouncing. It's finally rolling and it's gone. Yeah, you might not have seen that in the video. Maybe if I just move it a little bit so it immediately bumps into a wall. Put that there maybe. And hit play. Yeah, you can see it bounced off the wall and three seconds later it's gone. So that's a decent start. The last thing for this video, it's already longer than it probably should have been, um, is to reveal the arms and the gun in your player character. So if we just go into the character blueprint, and I've already zoomed in and found them, but I think by default it's very difficult to see anything in here. I think the camera's like miles away. So if you just click on an object and then press F, you'll just focus in on it like that. So with the mesh and then the, the gun selected, I'm just going to scroll down the details panel to find the rendering section. And we want the visibility on and we want hidden in game to be off for both of them. So we want it visible and we don't want it hidden in the game. And if we compile that, 
run it, we can see that we, we now have a gun and we have arms. So we're in a position where we've got a moving projectile object and we've got a visual for the gun. So it um, seems like a good place to stop this particular video and then we'll jump into the next one and get the spawning going.